All right, so this is the first of many videos that I'm going to make for Material Science uh, Engineering 201. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to make sure to just let everybody know that these videos aren't necessarily supposed to uh, make up for, for reading or for attending class or any of those things. These are supplemental uh, just to make sure that you get to listen to the material and understand the material before we come to class. You have a background in it so that we can have a good discussion and that we can, we can get into things that are a little bit deeper, uh, maybe complete some thoughts during class. And so there might be some holes, some things that I'll say we'll talk about later. Um, and when I say that, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be later in the videos, just that it will be later at some point. Uh, I also want to mention that my hope for this class is to get everybody to look at the world a little bit more differently, to take all the things that you've learned from physics and from chemistry and from engineering, maybe a little bit of biology, and apply them a little bit differently. I want you to be able to combine those things together so that they're not thought of as this is a chemistry thing or this is a physics thing or that this is just an engineering thing, that they, that they do go together and to be able to do something more interesting with them and to have a greater understanding of what's happening and at some point be able to ask questions like the why things happen, not just accept that they happen. So I wanted to start off with this flow chart. And as engineers, if we want to make some type of product, number one, products aren't, we don't think about them as some type of happy accident. What they are is they're things that are designed for a very specific purpose. Uh, they have a purpose in mind before we even set out to go and do them. And so if I have this idea of something that I want to do, uh, it's because I probably have some background in it. I've, I've learned some things. I know some engineering. I know some static, some dynamics, some electrical engineering, something about circuits. And so all the things that are up in your head that you can put on paper, that you can design, those uh, are who is taking care of these things. And there's lots of who's. There's scientists who try to really understand the world around us and understand things at a scientific level. We have the engineers who take those things and they can use them to develop new things, new ideas, new designs. We have technician, craftsmen, workmen, those people that can take those designs and they can, uh, they can build them, they can maintain them, uh, and they can use them in the real world um, on an everyday basis. But again, those are, are the people part of the design process of, of making a product. But there's a second part of making a product, and that is, what is the product made of? And so th that second part is where material science comes in. We need to make sure that we choose the correct material. If I wanted to make something that's going to conduct electricity, I need to make sure that I conduct a material that will do that and not choose an insulator. Uh, why did I choose a specific material? Again, it's because it has certain properties. And all these properties are important. If I want something to be a conductor, yes, the electrical properties are very important, but I also have to make sure that the thermal properties work so that it doesn't get too hot or that it can withstand a certain temperature. I have to uh, make sure the mechanical properties work, that it won't uh, break down, that it won't tear apart, that it won't uh, bend or anything along those lines if I don't want that to happen. Those properties, uh, even the ones that I'm really looking for, like that electrical property, um, all the way down to the thing that I don't care quite as much about, the thing that you don't think quite as much about when you say that you need a conductor, such as uh, what are the optical properties, magnetic properties, chemical properties of them, all those properties are dependent on two things. Uh, the composition, and that is what it's made out of. It's made out of uh, atoms, ions, or molecules. And then the atomic arrangement, how those atoms, ions, and molecules are arranged. How are they bonded together? What's the microstructure look like? And all those things together tell us something about the energy of the material. And so everything goes back to energy. Energy is very, very important. 
And so it's what we will continuously go back to try to figure out what's happening. And so as we get further on in the quarter, uh, we're going to start kind of on this energy side here and composition atomic arrangement. And we'll start moving closer towards being able to choose materials and maybe start producing some things. Um, but even as we're talking about choosing materials uh, for certain products and procedures, uh, we're going to always try to pull it back to back to the energy because that's really what we're talking about here. That's really what we're concerned about here is, is what is going on with the energy. And the reason for that is if I wanted to have a slightly different material, how can I make sure that I have a material that will act similarly? And what I need to do is I need to say, okay, well, I need, I don't want to use that specific uh, metal for a product, but I want something similar. And so you can go back and you can say, well, what other materials have similar properties? And why do they have those properties? Well, they have those properties because of what they're made of and how they're arranged. And again, that leads back to the energy uh, in that material. And that's how we can develop better materials and have materials that we really can do really interesting things with is really understanding what's going on uh, on this end of uh, material science. So I just wanted to talk really quickly, give you guys an example, a little thought experiment, uh, something that we can talk about in class, uh, kind of about how atomic arrangement really really plays a role here. And so here I have a picture of um, four different boards. We have uh, just a cut board here, uh, still has all the grains from the tree. Uh, we have this here, we, we have these wood chips that have been compressed and glued together. Uh, we have kind of a particle board here that uh, we get really fine wood chips, maybe even kind of like a sawdust type thing. And we uh, epoxy that together, we glue that together and compress it. And then we have uh, laminated wood. We have these sheets of wood that kind of have this uh, structure in it. And so let's say that this top sheet here, if we look at it, we can see on the side here that it has this light uh, layer and then a dark layer, a light layer, a dark layer, and a light layer. Uh, what's happening here is the layers are offset by 90 degrees. So the grains run one direction and then the next layer down, they've rotated it so that the grains run uh, perpendicular to that. And then the next layer down, it goes back to the original orientation. And so we have some laminated wood here. And so the question I have is, if all of these are made out of the exact same kind of wood, they have the exact same chemical makeup, um, then what are the differences between them? And then the question is, why are there differences between them? And then lastly, what can we do since there are differences between them? What are the different purposes? When would I want to use one versus the other? How would they act under specific conditions? And so those are things to think about, questions to, to think about in between now and our next class. And hopefully we can have a, a good discussion. And again, this is an example. It's not necessarily the, uh, the most important thing in material science is talking about wood boards, but it, it leads into an interesting discussion of where we're going to be going for the rest of the quarter.